we had a few weird things going on, some of which I don't really have an explanation for in this stage 16 of the Tour de France from Par de la Casse to saint gordin 170 Ks, medium mountain stage, 12 Ks, 5.5%, 13 Ks, 6.5%, 5.5 Ks, 6.7%, the Col de Porte d'Aspect. A stage perfect for, you remember this guy, 2020 DSM Mark Hirschi. Well, look at him now, feel old yet? Anyway, it was super cold in Andorra today, even colder up where they were near the French border. And so they did like a long 15 K neutralization at the start because it was a descent start in the cold so the riders could stop and take their clothes off. Enric Mas being hugged by by this quick step soigneur return to quick step perhaps maybe start the rumor mill why not anyway when the race did eventually kick off we had a fast false flight downhill before the first climb of the day called the port so we knew strong rulers would try and get in the break like we've seen on other stages and we got perhaps the strongest of them all Caspar Asgren winner of Tour of Flanders getting in a solo move about 90 seconds ahead of the peloton holding that gap for like 30 k's before he was joined by two people he would have been presumably pretty happy to see, which was Mattia Catania, his teammate. You can see him trying to get on this move with Fred Wright. Well, he eventually bridges across on the wheel of Kwiatkowski. He was freed today. I love to see it. So Catania trying to do another O'Connor and Guillaume Martin move up on GC on the sly. But he was chased, and the three were chased, by Christopher Yuld Janssen on Bike Exchange. He did one of the best ascents off the Col de Port. But once he catches them, and I thought he was keeping it together for Michael Matthews, not wanting to break to go, he goes past them on the descent, keeps pushing really hard. Then when Jan Bakalans goes with Fabian Duby, they kind of roll off the front. He joins them as well. You can see Michael Matthews in the background. We've got the intermediate sprint before the Col de la Cour. And with Philipson and Cavendish already dropped at this point, this was an opportunity for Matthews to take maximum intermediate sprint points to extend that gap on Jasper Philipson and get as close as possible to Cavendish. But Juliansen gets in this trio of Bacalans and Duby and they're pulling turns and they're gonna take first, second and third spots at the intermediate sprint points whilst Matthews gets into a pretty strong break with Colbrelli and Aramburu. He ends up beating Colbrelli in that intermediate sprint for fourth. But yeah, just a little bit curious that he was kind of denied the maximum points available because of his teammate in the break up the road. GC, of course, once that break went, UAE absolutely shut it down. The big question I have is, does anyone know why EF paced for like five minutes when the gap was at seven minutes to the breakaway? They're trying to honor Lockie Morton reaching Paris. Did they think they could bridge the gap for Magnus Court? I've got no idea. If you too were confused by some of the tactics in today's stage, make sure you like the video down below and subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to hit 130K subscribers by the end of the Tour de France, but chasing Bacalan Stubi and Yul Jensen who were getting onto the base of the Col de la Cour was a break with Patrick Conrad and Patrick Conrad attacked. Godu didn't follow and it's Fred Wright and Aaron Baru basically trying to chase Patrick Conrad, who's been unlucky in breaks so far this Tour de France. He was in the stacked break in stage seven. Mollimer attacked the other day. He was in that move and then got a minute. So he was kind of taking a note out of the Mollimer playbook, getting in front, bridging across to this trio. And Jules Janssen immediately starts to drop on this Cat 1 middle climb of the day called La Cour. The group behind is 46 seconds behind. So then the question is, how much help will Jules Janssen after all those efforts in the first 80 Ks be to Michael Matthews on the descent in the flat? You see Kosnerfra and Schoens chasing. Kosnerfra will get dropped pretty shortly. Not the best climber in the world. Matthews, called Braley, Fred Wright are pretty much trying to hang on and it's up to Godu to pace. And so you see the difference. Godu is basically pacing all the climbing sprinty boys or trying to back to Conrad. Rotter for Intermarche is sitting on because he's got his teammate Bacalans up the road. And so just like the other day, the stage that Molima won, we have a large group that isn't actually working 100% efficiently. We did see right in the valley afterwards pulling for Corbelli a little bit. I mean, he replaced Marc Perdun, it seemed, in the Tour de France lineup for Bahrain so that he could keep the races together for a few races that did actually suit Colbrelli, but mostly they were just pulling turns with a lot of people not really doing the maximum, like Pierre-Luc Perrachon or Rossi, for example. Conrad gets on to the last 5k, 6-7% climb, promptly drops Duby, then Jan Bacalans, and he started this climb with about a 30-second lead, and he builds that out to 55 57 seconds pretty quickly whilst the group behind is still kind of pulling turns and you remember you got Aaron Baru who's probably worried about getting dropped by David Gudu in the group behind so he's probably not pulling maximum before this climb and certainly not on the climb and here you can see 
Schkerns and Matthews are trying to pull, but Godu's not trying to bridge across yet, despite the gap having been at 25 seconds before Conrad attacks. Eventually, he increases the pace, but it seemed to be a bit too late, and he's marked first by Bonnemore, then just Colbrelli. And similarly, Godu's probably thinking as well about accelerations, trying to drop Sonny Colbrelli, because if he goes to the finish with him, Colbrelli's going to out-sprint him. Conrad gets over the top of that climb, a nice 50-second buffer. And then I thought, well, at least Colbrelli will be able to help David Guru, you know, a small climber on the descent. Incorrect. Colbrelli wasn't descending as well as David Gurdu at 27 k's to go. And then on the flat, those two really weren't working too well either. Maybe they were tired. You can see them ahead of the group. They dropped on the climb just behind. And it seemed at this point they were like 48 seconds behind Patrick Conrad. This group was at a minute five. They pretty much gave up and sat up and allowed that group to catch them. And this is when you knew Patrick Conrad pretty much had it in the bag. You've got tired riders who've just been hanging on on the climbs. You can see one of the Intermarche riders, might be backlines who've been in the break, skipping a turn. Now that Matthews and Colbrelli are here, they're probably fighting against each other or thinking about fighting against each other for the final sprint points. Meanwhile, Conrad is banging out his rhythm on the false flat section. And he extended that gap because we saw that lack of cooperation, even with four Ks to go, Pierre-Luc Perrichon with the gap at a minute attacking. But pretty amazing work from Patrick Conrad with a 76 kilometer move today. He'd never won a race apart from the Austrian National Championships. He even went to the Sibiu Tour last year. Bora took a stack squad, but Gregor Mulberger, his teammate, who served him on GC and on the Queen stage, but today he made sure he wasn't the one chasing from a minute behind like he was the other day, like Godu was today. And Bora Hansgrohe take another stage win despite the departure of Peter Sagan and Colbrelli and Matthews pip Pierre-Luc Perrichon for second and third right at the end. Other weird things that happened were the GC group who were like 14 minutes behind suddenly blew up on the last 1k 6% roller with Wout van Aert attacking despite all the GC contenders being there. It must have been a miscommunication or something. He thought someone was dropped and Jonas nearly loses time on the line and Tadej Pogacu is pretty much laughing afterwards like what were Jumbo Visma doing there? But anyway, here's the stage results. Conrad first, Colbrelli second, Matthews, Perrichon, Bonnemore, Adamburu, Schoens, Bacalans, Guru and Lorenzo Roerta. GC unchanged, Pagacha still 5.18 and 5.32 ahead of Uran and Jonas Wingergaard. We've got a big mountaintop finish in stage 17 tomorrow. Let me know what you expect from the stage. Are Ineos going to try something again? Is Pagacha just going to destroy everyone? Is the break going to win again? I'd be keen to hear your thoughts down below. But until that stage recap, ciao.